On this week's video, we are still dealing with the aftermath of the Dark Void kicking me out. Apparently, the movies that I was watching for the How Bad It Could Be series were so terrible that the Dark Void decided that it no longer wanted me to be in it. So I had to find this. I found a portal down in my basement for what appears to be a sort of grayish void. I guess it will work for the time being. Um, there's some like red in there too. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll make do. Um, and then this week we are talking about the Mangler. This is actually a fairly, fairly well requested series for me to cover. Or it's a short one, um, and we're about to find out how the continuity works in a series that is based on a short story about an object that really doesn't move. The story of the killer appliance begins back in 1995 with Toby Hooper's The Mangler. It was based on the Stephen King short story of the same name from the Night Shift collection. It kicks off with a factory worker bleeding into the machine, which causes some optical effects to happen, and then Robbie Englund shows up with yet another quarter ton of face makeup, although this, this is actually less convincing than his Freddy look. Buffalo Bill is here, and our big machine immediately shows signs of life and takes its first victim. Again, in case you're just hearing of this one, the villain is this giant laundry pressing machine. I mean, this looks like something someone purchased for use in their factory, right? Who went out and picked this out and saw this and looked at it and said, yep, this in no way looks evil. This ambulance has registration stickers that expire in 1993, so I guess that would most likely be our year here. And John has this demonologist brother-in-law who hears that someone bled on the mangler and immediately realizes that the thing is possessed. Their fears are confirmed when they confront the equally possessed ice box and destroy it. John suggests destroying the mangler, but Mark says no, because it may free the demon, but I mean, it, it worked with the ice box, so I'm not sure why it's such a bad idea. There's also a crime photographer who is also in old age makeup for some reason and it's revealed that old man Gartley has a deal with the demon and now has to sacrifice Sherry to it on her 16th birthday because look at this. This is what a 15 about to be 16 year old girl looks like. There's a newspaper clipping about John's wife's death dated August of 1993 and since that happened a while ago we're probably in 94 instead and I guess that license plate is off. There's a big final face-off, which is just not as thrilling when all you have to do is not get killed, is stay away from the front of the unmoving machine. And then England gets folded, and they attempt an exorcism, but the Mangler takes on a bigger, nastier CGI form and kills Mark. John and Sherry escape, but unfortunately Sherry has been taken over by the evil of the demon. But wait, wait. Was, was John bringing her flowers? Like... Romantically? Dude, she just turned 16. So the franchise sat empty for seven years because I guess no one figured you could make a franchise out of a stationary laundry press, but in 2002 the world witnessed The Mangler 2, and instead of a factory, we're at a high school. And again, this is what someone's idea of high school students look like. Bishop is here as the headmaster, and the school has a new high-tech security system and the majority of the kids are sent away on a field trip. Joe here decides to mess with Lance, so she goes online and gets a Mangler virus from a virus website because, you know, that's how that works. You just go online and get one. And here's where I tell you that there's really no connection to the previous film and there's no laundry action here at all, and instead we have a rogue computer virus called the Mangler. It starts to infect the security system, and pretty soon it's making cables hold shears to kill people, so I guess I guess it's more than just a virus, because I, I don't think that Norton stops that. Got to source an outside provider to create a bogus roundhouse download. Makes it look like the virus came from this computer. Yeah, sure, that, that sounds close enough to computer talk, right? Joe hacks and stuff while... Dan sniffs her shoulder like that's not awkward or anything. Characters are dying off and the mangler makes himself a face and they do this really weird thing with the editing. 
Uh, well, Dan and I will search this building. You two search the other side. The hell is that supposed to be? And and then there's this music. And what the hell is that supposed to be? And then there's this music. Have Rob Zombie's lawyers heard this? The Mangler takes over the Headmaster, but Joe uploads a program that shuts it down, killing the virus, but it lives on apparently. There's no date visible, but they mentioned movie titles earlier, and a few of them were from 2000, so real time seems likely, so let's say 2002. Well, we get a third entry with 2005's The Mangler Reborn, although it might as well be the second part with how little the actual part two tied into it. We meet Hadley here, who bought the press from the first film, and I've never been happier to see a laundry press since that means no more computer virus storyline. Hadley gets taken over by the press, waking it up, and he starts to kill people. He's supernatural now, able to take a shoe heel to the ear, and, and hey, Reggie's here. He's a small-time burglar and gets taken out pretty easily, so his son has to go in and save him. He finds a driver's license that expires in early 06, so I guess it'd have to be set before that, and Hadley has to feed people's bodies into the press in order to keep his own body from rotting. Somehow, no one can just get out of his house because he's reinforced everything, although there's really no attempts to get out and smash through the door or anything. The machine is also now much smaller than it was before since it just fits into a, a, a room of a house, and I guess it now has a bunch of knives attached to it, so it's less a presser and more a stabber, which doesn't really sound that good for laundry. After what seems to be about four hours, a couple of his victims lock him in a room, but he escapes through an air vent, because in this universe, household air vents are big enough for a grown man to crawl through, and easy enough to do that this guy just did it, but none of his victims ever did. Jamie pushes him into the press along with herself, but he survives, I guess. The end. Uh, so since our year isn't officially confirmed that the promotional material did say that it takes place a decade after the original, we're going to go ahead and set it in 2004. So there you have it. It's three movies um, that uh, don't tie together that well. Uh, the first movie is its own thing. The second movie is completely separate. The third one actually does tie back into the first one. Um, so there is a sort of continuity there. So the second one's kind of the outlier, which has no connection to the first one. Um, the third one does, I guess, hold a continuity to the first one, although it doesn't really matter. Um, it feels like a very different kind of a movie. It's more about just, you know, a guy killing people. You see the laundry press about three times in the entire movie. It's just not really a factor. Um, the first one of these was actually a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the first Mangler movie. It's a great little horror flick. Uh, Toby Hooper's uh, kind of style does kind of fit into it. It feels very Stephen Kingy. It's probably one of the better Stephen King adaptations because it just feels very much like his kind of a thing. Um, and I liked it, but the other two are pretty much not worth watching. The second one is a really terrible movie with all of the benchmarks of those early 2000s like hacker flicks. Um, and it's pretty, pretty cheesy and goofy. And the third one is, uh, it, it feels very much just like a uh, backyard kind of a movie. Uh, almost the entire movie takes place in one house. And it's very, very, very slow and dull. Um, if you are excited to see Reggie, he's in it for literally about three minutes. So not really worth checking out for. Um, but all in all, there you go. There you have it. Let me know what you thought of this one down below in the comments. And do the whole liking and subscribing thing. Um, we're doing our best to make the best that I can do with uh, a broken computer. Hopefully these are looking as good as they normally look and sounding as good as they normally sound. Um, and let me know what you think of that and check out the patrons over here. These guys are helping support the channel and helping get my computer fixed. So thanks guys. And uh, I will see you shortly for another great video. Thanks guys. Bye bye.